so much for joining with us, and Merry Christmas to you. Well, more than $3 million, that's how much money the FBI paid Twitter to suppress negative tweets about the Biden family. Those revelations and more were uncovered in corporate emails dubbed the Twitter files. Well, Republicans on Capitol Hill are outraged by the evidence and planning to make the scandal a top priority for the GOP majority in January. Dale Hurd has the story. Twitter corporate emails released this week by new owner Elon Musk show the FBI paid Twitter almost three and a half million dollars over the course of two years for suppressing tweets damaging to Joe Biden and the Democrats. Documents reveal how the FBI treated Twitter like a department of the bureau, telling the social media giant which tweets and accounts to take action against. In one of the many emails FBI agent Elvis Chan forwarded to Twitter staff this list of accounts to block. More than a dozen former FBI employees still work at Twitter, although Musk fired former FBI general counsel James Baker, who became Twitter's counsel, for his possible role in information suppression. In the days and weeks before the 2020 presidential election, it appears Twitter employees followed orders from the FBI and the Biden campaign, specifically blocking stories and tweets about Hunter Biden's laptop which was found to contain emails showing influence peddling by then-Vice President Joe Biden and possible crimes by his son. Mark Meckler was the CEO at the social media platform Parler and is president of Convention of States Action. When the media itself becomes an instrument of government, which it seems like it has been, we're seeing that now with the release of the Twitter files, that's very dangerous because the media is now controlling the narrative that the government wants it to control. Republicans on Capitol Hill are understandably furious. House Republicans are already gearing up for a sweeping investigation of Twitter's relationship with the FBI. Incoming House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer. Anyone that cares about free speech should be outraged. Whether you're a Republican or Democrat, this has to stop. This is going to be a top priority for the Republican majority in January. Incoming House Intelligence Committee Chairman Mike Turner. Who is it that's coordinating this? How can we cut off the money, prohibit this in the future? And we will use our subpoena power to track that down and make certain that this doesn't happen again. And on the Republican House Judiciary Committee site, the simple tweet, does anyone still trust the FBI? Meckler believes that by essentially serving as an arm of the government, Twitter has opened itself up to a First Amendment lawsuit as has the FBI. It appears that the government put so much pressure on Twitter and was working so closely in concert with Twitter that Twitter can be treated itself as a government actor, what we would call under the state actor theory, and is liable for First Amendment violations potentially. But House Republican threats to use the power of the purse against the FBI by denying it funding could be short-circuited by the omnibus spending bill, which would fund the FBI for a full year. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Well, I, in my opinion, this is an absolutely shocking story. And whether you're a Democrat or Republican, all Americans should be concerned, uh, not just to the level of, well, I'm bothered by it, but uh, demanding change, that the FBI has gotten involved in politics, that they're trying to be just like in the Roman Empire, the Praetorian Guard, they get to choose who's going to be the incoming emperor. That's exactly what they did here. They said, we're going to suppress negative information about a presidential candidate in the middle of a presidential campaign and not just suppress it by saying it would be nice if you didn't publish this story, but we're actually going to pay you uh, and pay you $3 million and we're going to make sure FBI employees are now employees in your company, uh, the very head of their legal division at Twitter, uh, former FBI. This is absolutely outrageous. And all Americans should be concerned about this. What does this mean for the future of democracy if your Federal Bureau of Investigation is actively involved in campaign matters? This is something Congress should absolutely take up. It's something that obviously the Department of Justice should take up. 
This is illegal. You can't have federal employees engage in active campaigning. That's what this is. And it throws a light on everything that they've been doing recently, whether it's the supposed Russian collusion and not identifying the Steele dossier properly, uh, taking an administration through two years of investigation, uh, an independent counsel, all based on lies. This is all part of our campaigning. But we have to do something here. Uh, let's go back in time, 2012. Uh, there you have an active campaign, President Obama running for re-election. What's going on at the IRS? There's this group called the Tea Party. They're trying to form organizations uh, to engage in politics. They need to apply to the IRS for their tax status. This isn't so their donors get a, de a deduction, it's so they're not taxed at income rates as a political organization. What does the IRS do? Well, they slow roll them. They don't let them get their tax exempt status. Therefore, they're not operational in the campaign. Lois Lerner was part of that. She headed it up. She admitted to it in an investigation by Congress. She took the Fifth Amendment. Was there any action against her? No. And today she is drawing a pension from the U.S. government as a former government employee, even though clearly she admitted to political activity in her office at the IRS where she re reduced political speech. She, she prevented people from organizing. We have to stop this. This isn't something that the framers of the Constitution ever intended, that the very functions of government, the very bureaucracy that depends on federal funding, is now actively involved in the election so that they can make sure their funding continues. That's what's going on here, and it is absolutely anti-democratic. Well, in other news, President Zelensky visits Washington, D.C. today. It's his first trip outside Ukraine since the war began. Wendy Griffith has that story and more from the CBN Newsroom. Wendy? Gordon, Zelensky is scheduled to meet with President Biden at the White House today. He'll also sit down with members of the cabinet and national security officials for talks about the future of the war. This evening, Zelensky will make a joint address to Congress. Also, President Biden reportedly will announce nearly $2 billion in security assistance for Ukraine, including Patriot missile batteries. This as Russia continues its missile strikes on Ukrainian infrastructure, leaving millions with no heat in the freezing winter temperatures. A widespread winter storm threatens to disrupt the plans of millions of holiday travelers over the next several days. Meanwhile, local authorities across the country are worried about power outages due to high winds and ice. CBN's Abigail Robertson reports. Large parts of the U.S. are bracing for blizzard conditions that could last through Christmas. The weather is likely to bring a dangerous combination of sub-zero temperatures and high winds. It's already hit the Pacific Northwest. Today, it will hammer the Rockies, then the plains and Midwest with freezing temperatures and heavy snow. Tuesday in Chicago, travelers race through O'Hare Airport, hoping to avoid delays and cancellations that the storm could bring. Thursday was already predicted to be the busiest holiday travel day. On Friday, the storm moves south. In Texas, the fear is power outages after a historic freeze in 2021 that knocked out electricity to 4 million and led to hundreds of deaths. One energy expert explained. If it's in the single digits in DFW and it's in the teens in Houston and South Texas, there's very little chance that there wouldn't be some kind of rolling outage in those kinds of conditions. It's just too much demand. But Lewin adds temperatures should be a little warmer this time around so the state can keep its power lines up and running. In Northern California, another natural disaster has left homes in ruin, damaged roads and led to two deaths. Early Tuesday, a 6.4 earthquake rocked Frio Dell, north of San Francisco, cutting power to tens of thousands and destroying homes. We were woke up by a big roar and things falling off the wall, hitting us on the head. Two died from medical emergencies during the quake, but authorities say for others, an alert system helped them to drop, cover and keep safe. 10 seconds in advance of the earthquake shaking to some 3, 000, 3 million people. 
The quake area is lightly populated, which also helped. In the next several days, watch for temperatures to drop dramatically across much of the country, including central Florida this weekend. Abigail Robertson, CBN News. Thanks, Abby. Turning to Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu is expected to announce he's formed a new government before tonight's midnight deadline. According to Israeli media, the presumptive prime minister will relay that message to President Isaac Herzog later today. He could also ask for an additional four days to form his coalition government, but it appears he won't need it. The cabinet will be sworn in the days following the announcement. It would launch the sixth term for Israel's longest serving prime minister. Well, since Israel reopened its borders in March, tourists have been flooding back. This influx is helping many areas, especially around Bethlehem this time of year. However, as Julie Stahl reports, a more pressing issue is facing the local Christian community. Christians in Beit Zahor, the area where shepherds learned of Jesus' birth more than 2,000 years ago, are happily welcoming visitors back to their town. This year is back and the, the, tourist, uh, the tour, tourism now in Bethlehem is very good. We need tourism in Bethlehem. But without tourism in Bethlehem, we, we can't work. We have more than 100 uh, workshops for handicraft, for wood, uh, olive wood and mother, uh, mother bear. Hani Al-Hayek is mayor of Beit Zahur, a majority Christian town linked to Bethlehem. He says about two million tourists visit here each year. Christmas in Beit Zahur it is something different because from Beit Zahur the angel announced that Jesus is born in this day. For us, we are the media of Jesus and we are so happy to receive all our visitors from other towns. Even with a boom of visitors, Beit Zahor and nearby Bethlehem are suffering an exodus of another kind. Christians have been leaving Palestinian Authority-controlled areas in great numbers for decades. I view the future of the Christians here as a gloomy or unpromising because the ongoing immigration is a big problem to us. It's unclear exactly how many people have left Beit Zahor in the last 20 years, although El Hayek believes at least 20,000 now live in Chile and the U.S. That's a big number considering the current population is around 15,000, 80 percent Christian and 20 percent Muslim. If you visit Flint in Chicago, in Chicago, United States, you think you are in Beit Sahur. They are seeking for security, seeking for economic situation. They are seek for the, uh, the best life for their families. Samir Kumsie, who runs what's known as the Nativity TV station, sees emigration as a big problem. I am afraid that one day will come that the Holy Sepulchre, the Nativity Church, where Jesus was born, will be close empty museums. Kumsie called on Christians worldwide to help their brothers and sisters in Beit Sahor to continue to live and thrive in the place tied to Jesus' birth. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. Thanks, Julie. Definitely praying for the Christians there in Israel. Gordon? And praying for Bethlehem. But Bethlehem, I, I remember visiting in the 1970s, absolutely profound experience. We had a candlelight service in the fields overlooking the city of Bethlehem. And uh, shepherds wanted to know what these crazy Americans were doing, uh, lighting candles. So we actually had shepherds who were guarding their flocks and they came up as we were singing a little town of Bethlehem. But that is a distant memory now because in Bethlehem, the population has flipped. It used to be 80% Christian. Uh, and now it's just 20% Christian. Why? Because of the Palestinian Authority. Under Israeli control, Bethlehem thrived, uh, but under Palestinian control, it's not thriving anymore. And people are leaving in droves, um, a lot of them for opportunity, for jobs. Uh, but the biggest issue is security. And, and do Christians have security in the Palestinian Authority? I think the answer clearly is no. Well, Candace Cameron Bure has entertained millions through her roles in Full House and countless Chris Christmas movies. She's now on a mission to expand her career, making films with deeper, life-changing themes. Billy's, uh, CBN's Billy Holloway recently talked with Candace about her new Christmas movies and her future plans. 
We are going to spend Christmas in Ohio with your Uncle Paul and Ashley. I have to work. We're the only family they have. It's up to us. Hey, are you with me? Oh, my goodness! Merry Christmas! That's a scene from Candace Cameron Bria Ray's latest film, A Christmas Present, a story about the power of faith and family. The movie airs on Great American Family and is streaming on Pure Flix. The biggest theme that is most important to me in this film is the theme of, of God in our lives and the Christian faith. I mean, this is a, a Christmas movie that actually talks about Christ. And that's another major theme that, I have, that I've never been able to talk about at length in my Christmas films. Bure has no plans to step away from producing those lighthearted romantic holiday films, though she wants to tackle deeper and more eternal subject matter. Listen, I love, you know, the big city girl in the small town uh, country boy Christmas movies. I, I love them. I'm going to continue to make those kinds of movies. But but I also want to make movies, movies that have depth and purpose and meaning that can actually change someone's life. And the Christmas present fits that bill. It's about Maggie, who's on a mission to give her widowed brother his best Christmas ever. In the process, she ends up learning her own transformational lesson about faith. This is about a married woman and her family, and her marriage is not where she wishes it would be. And her husband isn't feeling it either, you know, and they have some things to talk about. And yet the busyness, it's very easy to sweep it under the rug and just let life pass you by and never really tackle some of the, the hard conversations. But what happens is that Maggie and her family really learn the importance of, of being together and valuing relationship over busyness. The film is part of Bure's new role with Great American Family, where she also serves as the family-friendly cable network's chief content officer, helping with ideas and concepts behind the camera as well. You've been doing this for so long, but getting the chance to sort of frame something that maybe you're not in front of the camera on and look at all those different elements and, and approve them and put that together. That's got to be a unique experience for you. It's it's wonderful. And why I want wanted this position and to be in there is because I've been in this genre for a very long time to know this this holiday space and these types of movies. And so I have a, a really unique perspective because it has been all consuming for a very long portion of my life. And I think I know the space very, very well. So I want to contribute to the overall aesthetic look and feel of the network itself. And then along with curating content for the channel. Bure is also busy elsewhere, starring in Reindeer in Here, a new animated Christmas special streaming on Paramount+. Plus. We asked what her fans can expect from the film. I'm expecting this to be a brand new classic in your family's tradition of movie watching. The themes of this are really great. It um, is about a little reindeer named Blizzard, Blizz, and he's got one antler that is shorter than the other so he's different and the themes of this movie really s not only say that different is okay but we're going to celebrate those differences within each other because because we've been we're fearfully and wonderfully made uniquely each one of us from her new role at great american family to her animated holiday adventure bure wants to keep god at the center relying on prayer and faith to guide her decisions how has prayer, in light of just life, career, family, how has it transformed your life um, and your faith? Prayer is my immediate connection to God. That's how I talk to him and communicate with him. Of course, I read my Bible and I, and I spend time with him, but, but prayer is, is my main form of communication. So just like any relationship, when you are spending time with that person and you're talking with them, that's where your relationship grows and develops and, and you nurture that over time. So I love God more and more when I get to know him through, through prayer. This is Billy Hollowell for CBN News. Well, congratulations to Candace. Congratulations for your effort to let's make entertainment that's deeper, that has meaning. And if you want to learn more about it, all you have to do to find out more about Great American Family, just go to CBNNews.com. Ashley? 
Well, just two years ago, Stephanie Stryker got her greatest Christmas gift, and she's been thanking God for it ever since. Her husband, Russ, had COVID, and doctors said there was little hope for his recovery. But Stephanie refused to believe them, and that set the stage for a Christmas miracle. It was like a dog panting, and I kept telling him, if you don't stop breathing like that, I'm going to take you to the ER. You know, slow down, take deep breaths, and he just couldn't. In September of 2020, Russ Stryker got what he thought was a cold. After several days, his symptoms got worse, and his wife Stephanie rushed him to the hospital. He just kept saying, I, I feel like my body's shutting down. Um, but he was panting. He just wasn't breathing normal. I wheeled him in myself. They immediately took him in, intubated him, and tested him. Russ tested positive for COVID-19. Before Stephanie could even process the night's events, Russ was put on a ventilator. They basically were saying he, that he was, you know, he was dying and there was nothing they could do. Russ was a beloved high school football coach and teacher in Kingman, Arizona. He and Stephanie had three children together. She began reaching out to the school, family, and friends for prayer. I got on Facebook and I just briefly let everybody know. And I mean, he probably had thousands of people praying for him at some point. My cousin lives in Nashville, for example, and she has a church and she has a prayer chain. And she's like, we've got him on there, you know, and just so many people that, that did that. I got this call from Stephanie and she said that she had taken Russell to the hospital. And at that time, the doctor said that they did not think that Russell would make it through the night. Due to COVID restrictions, Stephanie was not even allowed to be with her husband as his condition deteriorated quickly. He was in a, a room. Then there was another room outside of that that the hospital staff would go in and you know trade out. We went to a room and we prayed and prayed and prayed. Stephanie clung to her faith, but also began to consider a worst case scenario. I had my Abraham and Isaac moment where I had to tell God, if you if you want to take him, I lay him down. What I want is, is perfect healing. I want him to come out of this. But, you know, I, I relinquish to your will, whatever it is. Russ spent the next month in a coma and on a ventilator. In the middle of the night on October 26th, Russ coded. He was revived, but doctors held out little hope for him. The doctor calls me again at about 5.36 that morning and said his, his blood pressure is extremely low, we've thrown everything at it, and we just can't keep it up, you should come down. That morning, Stephanie, her sister, and her friend Diana arrived at Kingman Hospital and started a prayer vigil outside his room. We stayed there for, I believe it was about seven hours, and we prayed the whole time. Then something miraculous happened. Boy, I'd put that worship music on and we just, you know, and I can't tell you what it is to look at that monitor thing and see that his blood pressure started out at like 50 over 30. I mean, it was just an even lower. And as we prayed and sang, his blood pressure began to climb and climb. And that was the like the first time that I just witnessed, you know, wow, this is crazy. Russ eventually stabilized and was transferred to the Mayo Clinic in Phoenix, where he spent another month on the ventilator. In mid-December, he finally began to regain consciousness. I had no idea what the time frame was at all. Um, I had a feeling that I had missed my football season, um, but I, but I wasn't sure, you know, like if if Christmas had already come and gone. I just didn't know how much how much time had had elapsed 77 days on a ventilator. Russ went home on December 17th. It was the best Christmas gift Stephanie ever had. We all spend Christmas Eve together at, um, at my parents. And, you know, part of the festivities that we always do is you say what you're thankful for through the year. So many things God did through that experience, both for us and people close to us and people we've never even met. He still performs miracles just as big as they were in the Bible. And my husband's one of them. Today, Russ is nearly fully recovered and is back to coaching. He loves telling the story of his healing every chance he gets. There's no medical explanation. I've talked to several of my nursing friends. It was 100% a God thing. No reason I should be alive other than that God decided that I was going to be alive.
because I get older and I, I just believe in the power of prayer more than I ever have. I said I just believed God would bring him through it, and he did. I don't know why God did it. I, I have no idea why, you know, I don't deserve it any more than anyone else. It's no different than biblical times. You know, it's it's no different. He's the same. He was the same then as he is now, you know, and he could heal people then. He raised people from the dead then, and he did the same with me. Yes, and amen. Russ is preaching. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hear those words. The miracles that Jesus performed in the Bible, the miracles that the disciples, the apostles, the early followers of Jesus, the same miracles they did happen today because God is alive and active. And as sons and daughters of the Most High God, we have the power of God inside of us. And we are called to pray for the sick to heal people, to cast out demons. And so today, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna pray for you. Gordon and I are going to believe for miracles because God is not done with you. You got a pulse, you got a purpose. And whatever you have been crying out to the Lord for, we just believe that today is the day that He will answer you. But before we pray, we just wanna uh, just share some of the prayer requests that we've gotten in on our um, ornaments that we've been receiving from you guys. Um, I got a few here, and this is somebody asking to be healed of high blood pressure. Another person asking healing from shingles and the pain. Another person to be delivered from depression and somebody else asking, need a better uh, paying job, living paycheck to paycheck. Gordon, what There's do you have? There's one, neuropathy needs healing, neuropathy in legs and hands, to be healed of Lou Gehrig's disease, healing from mental, physical, and, uh, and drug abuse, and then strength and wisdom to raise my rebellious granddaughter. I can hear the heart cry in that one. Mm -hmm. Let's come to God with these. And Ashley said, if you have a pulse, you have a purpose. Here's another thought for you. You can't be too dead for a resurrection. So here's Russ, and by all medical advice, all medical opinion, he should be dead. But no, God had a different idea. Let him have a different idea about you. Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. He didn't come to bring us pain. We're not serving him by suffering with dignity. That's not why he came. He came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Healing is his very name. Deliverance, his very name. Sound mind, that, these are all things that come from him and just flow from him. From his innermost being, from his essence, you get these things. So let's ask for that. Let's ask for his kingdom to come, his dominion to be in your life, all over your family, everything concerning you. Let it be his dominion, his will being done. Let's command everything that is not of him to leave you now. He came to break these things off of you. He came to set the captives free so that we can worship him. Let's do that. Let's agree with the Messiah. Let's agree this Christmas and let Christ be born in your life again. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you. We come to you believing and we thank you that you came to us, that you want us so much that you were willing to be born in a stable. You were willing to live among us, live a life in time, and you were willing to be sacrificed for us. And you didn't stop there. You rose from the dead, and right now, what are you doing? You are praying for us. So we agree with you. We come into agreement. We say amen to everything that you have done. We say amen to every prayer that you've prayed over us. We say amen to your sacrifice. We say amen to your resurrection. And now, may that resurrection power be in us, all around us. And with that power, we command everything that is not of you to leave us now. All, all powers of darkness be broken over my life, over the lives of everyone watching. 
you have no authority anymore. You must leave now in Jesus' name. The healer has come. The deliverer has come. He is born again in my heart. And with that power, I have every right to a whole body, to life and life more abundantly. So I receive all the promises of God. I say yes and amen to every single one that you heal all my diseases. You forgive all my iniquity. You cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I receive it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Ashley, God's given you something. Yeah, I believe someone's watching and you've got like severe TMJ. You've got a really clenched jaw. You can barely open your mouth. The muscles are so tight. It is so painful. You get horrible migraines because of this. And I just believe God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus. Just begin to open your mouth and kind of move around your jaw like you haven't been able to in a long time. This is something you've been crying out to the God to God for. You have been in so much pain. Pain be gone right now in, in Jesus' name. TMJ, leave her body. I just pray um, just your muscles relax. And there's a physical release in your jaw and around your head and your skull. No more migraines in Jesus' name. I believe this is a Christmas miracle for you. Just receive it now in Jesus' name. There's someone you're laying hands on your right knee and there's just tremendous pain that's been difficulty for you for years. And God is healing that knee for you right now. You couldn't bear weight on it before. I challenge you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. You Feel that strength going into that joint. Get up, put weight on it, and realize it will hold you now. In Jesus' name, be healed and be made whole. Someone else, you've got a, um, a, a very severe neck injury, uh, and uh, your neck was twisted violently. Uh, God is healing everything concerning that. Every single vertebra, every bit of cushion between the vertebra, every nerve, every muscle, every everything concerning it. He's giving you brand new. Everything is being healed, being restored right now. Do what you couldn't do before. Receive your healing now in Jesus' name. Yeah, and I just still feel like I need to pray for the person with the TMG. You're just afraid that it's it might be temporary and the pain will come back. And right now, we just come against any doubt and fear in the name of Jesus, God. And I just pray that you just touch her from the top of her head to the soles of your feet. God, right now, I pray that she is just, um, just overflowing with your presence. Just begin to praise him and worship him and trust him with your whole heart heart. He sees you. He loves you. He has a hope and a future for you. Suffering is not in your future in Jesus' name. And I just believe there's somebody else watching. You've got like a bacterial infection on your right foot. It's even like in your toenails. I believe God is touching you right now in Jesus' name. That's also been very painful. You can't really walk on your foot. God is healing you right now of that. It's actually a skin condition. In Jesus' name, just receive it right now. He sees you. He loves you. Thank you, Lord. Uh, many people are suffering with depression, doubt, confusion, um, can't organize your thoughts, uh, all of these things. In Jesus' name, Jesus. may you have a sound mind. May you look at life with joy again. May there be peace, the peace that passes all understanding. May you have righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. May all your thoughts be ordered by him. May every thought be captive to the anointing that Jesus is pouring over you right now. Let that anointing settle into all the hidden areas in your heart, all the resentments, all the things that have been done to you. We just release them all to him and ask that everything be cleansed, every thought, every emotion be from him from this day forward. He wants to give it to you. He wants to give you his mind, his thoughts, his heart, his breath, everything. Just give it all to him. He will fill you to overflowing. Receive it now. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. If you've been healed, let us know. Give us a call. We want to share your good report. 1-800-700-7000. And we believe in prevailing prayer. That's the prayer that doesn't give up until you get the answer. The promise is there. The promise is clear. Let us get that promise fulfilled in your life. It's our honor, our privilege to stand with you in prayer. All you got to do is call us. 1-800-700-7000. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Massive crowds overtook Buenos Aires, Argentina, as jubilant fans welcomed home the World Cup champions. Millions of flag-waving fans flooded the streets of the capital city to celebrate the team's triumphant return. The crowd grew so big that it swamped the parade, forcing the players to abandon their bus and fly out by helicopter. Argentina beat France in one of the most dramatic and widely watched World Cup finals in history. The victory, a moment of relief for a nation that's suffering economic hardship. Congratulations to them. Well, Jewish people around the world are observing Hanukkah. The holiday celebrates their miraculous victory over their Greek rulers more than 2,000 years ago. A recent discovery in the J Judean desert is providing clues about that legendary Jewish revolt. Archaeologists say these ancient silver coins likely belong to Jews who fled to the Judean mountains before their army, called the Maccabees, rose up against the Greeks. They found the hoard in a box hidden in a cave. This is the first archaeological evidence that directly verifies the events mentioned in the book of Maccabees about the Maccabees rebellion. The book of Maccabees says the Greeks pursued the Jews in the desert and slaughtered them. However, the Jews were ultimately victorious. They reclaimed Jerusalem and rededicated the temple to the Lord. Fascinating. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. This holiday season, go deeper into the biblical story of Christmas. In CBN's free devotional, Emmanuel, God with us, you'll witness God's nearness in the birth of Jesus, and you'll be encouraged to trust in God's promises for your life today. Get your free copy of Emmanuel, God with us. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash Emmanuel. Every time it rained, Ruth worried that her house would collapse. A storm had already blown off part of her roof and knocked down a wall. Ruth knew she needed to move somewhere safe. Yet she only makes $3 a day, so she couldn't afford to go anywhere else. Ruth Morella has been a single mother in Peru for six years. To support her three daughters, she sold snacks to neighbors. One day, a storm hit their community, and her makeshift house could not withstand the strong winds. The wind blew off the back of the roof and the wall. After that, living here was dangerous. Now, when a strong wind comes or the house moves, I've moved my daughters to safety. This is 10-year-old Yomira. I was very afraid that pieces of metal and wood from the roof will fall on us. Most stormy nights, Ruth says she now watches her daughter sleep. She's afraid that at any moment, the wooden timber supporting the house could fall on them. She's also concerned about the impact of the cold, rainy nights. My youngest daughter always got sick with bronchitis and flu because of the cold weather and draft. During the pandemic, Ruth's sales suffered. There was barely enough to feed her daughters. There's not been any extra to repair the house. I made about $3 a day. With that, I made breakfast for my daughters. I stretched the breakfast food out so they could have a snack when they cried asking for food. There was not enough to eat. Operation Blessing first came to Ruth's community to develop a chicken program to help low-income families. We trained Ruth and gave her 100 chickens and a chicken coop to start a poultry business. For me, it was a chance to have an income, to support my family. It was a blessing because with the chicken and egg sales, I bought food for the girls and I started to save. And when we saw their living conditions, 
we built Ruth a new house with a kitchen, bedrooms, and a bathroom. We have a kitchen, I have pots where I cook, and I have my bed to sleep. I am very happy. Thank you for giving me a house and the chickens. It was a dream that I wanted so much for my daughters. I am very happy in my new house. You can make people happy. You can make them have a hope, have a future, have an understanding that God loves them, cares for them, that you love them, you care for them. You want to see them have a future. You want to see them have a better life. You can make that possible by becoming a member of the 700 Club. It's amazing what happens when tens of thousands of people get together and say, well, let's do good in the world. Let's be a force for good. Let's help people and help them very tangibly. Not some handout, but a hand up to a whole new life, a whole new way of living. You also can be part of preaching the gospel around the world and doing that through media, through television. Uh, you can make all of these things possible by joining with us and saying, yes, I want to join the 700 Club. How much is that? Well, it's just $20 a month, and that breaks out to just 65 cents a day. Some of you can join at higher levels, and we have those for you. 700 Club Gold at $40 a month. 1,000 Club is $1,000 a year. That breaks out to $84 a month. If you have the means and, and, and the heart to give generously, we also have 2,500 Club at 2,500 a year. Founder, $5,000 or more a year. And then Chairman Circle, 10,000 or more a year. At whatever level God is speaking to you to give, do it now and be a part of it. 1-800-700-7000. Now, when you call to join, make sure you ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving. The bank is doing all the work. No checks to write, and we can send as our gift to you Power for Life monthly teaching CDs. So if you'd like those, ask for Pledge Express when you call or go to CBN.com. When you give monthly on the Internet, you'll automatically sign up for Pledge Express. The shepherds and the wise men, they're included in nativities everywhere. Yet there's a deeper meaning to their roles in the Christmas story that you may not know. Author Rick Renner explains. The Christmas story is the most wonderful story that has ever been told. And this is a time of the year when you and your family need to fall in love with a miracle that took place on Christmas. Luke 2, 6 and 7 says, The time came for her baby to be born, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. 8 and 9 says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. The angel of the Lord appeared to this particular group of shepherds because this was not just any group of shepherds. These were shepherds under Levitical care whose charge was to raise lambs, which would be offered as sacrifice at the time of Passover. And when the angel of the Lord appeared and said, this will be a sign to you, you will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. This literally meant, guys, you're looking at the wrong lamb. The real lamb of God has just been born in Bethlehem. But you may ask, what are swaddling clothes? To make sure they were unblemished, they would take little bandages and would wrap the legs of newborn lambs to make sure they were protected. So the first time that Jesus ever appears in the Bible, he appears as a little lamb wrapped in swaddling clothes, and that's because he was born to be the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. In Matthew 2, verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. You may ask, Who are Magi? Well, in the world today, we do not have the equivalent. Magi were priests, they were astrologers, they were scientists. Wow, these were powerful people. In fact, Magi had so much power with a single word they could install a king and with a single word they could depose a king. And that's why King Herod was so upset when they showed up saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? And when they came, they came with caravans. They came with troops, soldiers, and armor because they were carrying a whole caravan of gifts which they were bringing to the king that had just been born. 
Matthew 2.11 says, And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When they came, they didn't come to Bethlehem, but they went all the way to Nazareth where the Holy Family had been living in their house already for two full years. And when they came into that house, they saw Mary and the toddler king in front of them, and they fell down and worshiped him. And they gave him treasures of gold was significant because this was a gift given to a king at birth. Frankincense was a perfume which was used in high priestly ministry. Myrrh was actually an embalming fluid. And in these three gifts, there's a prophetic statement that Jesus is the king of all kings. He is the high priest and he was born to die as the lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. He was born as the Lamb of God. He was introduced by John the Baptist as the Lamb of God. And Jesus died on the cross as the Lamb of God. From my family to your family, I want to say, have a wonderful Christmas. And remember that Jesus really is the reason for this season. I really like Rick Renner. I like his books. His books on the seven, seven churches of Revelation were, were an absolute revelation to me. So he has even more stories in his brand new book, and it's called Christmas. The rest of the story, I'll hold it up for you. It's now available nationwide wherever you get books. And as we were sitting here talking, <laughs> Ashley Key started thumbing through it, and, and she was violating uh, the Tenth Commandment. <laughs> I was cutting. This, this is one of. It's a really beautiful book. Yeah. It's great. I can't I can, give it to you because you it totally belongs. Like... It belongs to somebody else. <laughs> well, our I line producer who likes to use it. To, you know, it's 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 great go. for making sermons at Christmas time. <laughs> there so we go. You can have one too. It's available yeah. now. We leave you today with these words from John, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.